Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Daily Devotions with D with Didi with David. <laughs> oh wow, no, that's prophetic. He is. To God. That's, that was an honest mistake. I didn't plan that. Sure, yeah. Hey, we got a hummingbird over on our speeder, a little ruby throated. All right, welcome everybody. Um, today I want to talk about faith versus fear. We're going to look at the spies in Numbers thirteen. Ten of the spies said, we can't do it. Two of the spies said, we can. Which will you be? Numbers 13, verse 27. How big is your God? That's going to be the question today. Is your God bigger than the challenge? Or is your challenge bigger than your God? Um, Numbers chapter 13. Turn in your Bibles. I'm reading from the ESV. We're trying a new deal today. Somebody said the volume was a little weird for them, so I bought a microphone. $24 special on Amazon. Came in yesterday. So... Make it make a comment in the section comment section if you think the volume is a little better with the microphone. All right, Numbers 13, verse 27. Uh, so the spies come back after 40 days, and they told them, We came to the land to which you sent us. It flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. So they bring back fruit. It's awesome. It's a great land. God wanted to bring them to the land. He did bring them to the land, but he sent the spies as a test. Who would believe that I'm bigger than the inhabitants, and who will believe that the inhabitants are bigger than me? Verse 28, however, boy, I don't, boy, this however is a turning point. The spies, some of the spies said, however, the people who dwell in the land are strong, and the cities are fortified and very large, and besides, we saw the ascendants, and they list all these people, and they say, that, uh, that they are bigger. Verse 30, Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and occupy it. See, he was full of faith, and so was Joshua. Then the men who had gone up with him said, we're not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we are. Key verse. The people, the obstacles, the challenges, the, these ten spies said, bigger than us, can't do it. They didn't look to God. They didn't believe that God was bigger. So they brought to the people of Israel a bad report of the land that they had spied out. So this infected the whole uh, group of Israelites. So our attitude, whether we live by faith or fear, will infect others. We'll be that little leaven for the good or the bad. Which do you want to be? Are you going to be a person of faith or a person of fear? Especially during this COVID-19, are you going to give in to fear? Are you going to give in to whatever is out there in terms of the news? Are you going to believe God stands strong and believe that He's bigger than any challenge you face? <clears throat> so they brought to the people of Israel a bad report of the land that they had spied out, saying, by the way, if you're just joining us, we're in Numbers 13, verse 32. Numbers 13, 32. And they said, the land through which we have gone to spy it out. It is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people that we saw in it are of great height. And we, and then at the end of 33, we are like grasshoppers to them. So they believed that the people, the obstacles were bigger than they were. But then in chapter 14, verse 5, then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly and the congregation, Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, who were among those who spied out the land, tore their clothes and said to all the congregation of the people of Israel. So now they're speaking faith to the people of Israel. The land which we pass through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, He will bring us into the land and give it to us. A land that flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord. Do not fear the people of the land, for they are bread for us. See, they believe God was bigger than the challenges and the obstacles. Their protection is removed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. Then all the congregation set out to stone them with stones. They weren't going to believe this. But the glory of the Lord appeared at the tent of meeting to all the people of Israel. God's giving His glory and saying, Look, remember who I am. I brought you out of the land of Egypt. Don't go back there. I fed you with manna and quail, the, the cloud, the fire. I've manifested myself. Remember who I am. This is the key to not allowing fear to overcome you. Knowing who God is. Knowing His greatness. Knowing His attributes. Verse 11, And the people said to Moses, How long will this people despise me? How long will they not believe in me in spite of all the signs that I've done among them? 
I'll strike them with the pestilence and disinherit them, and I'll make you a nation greater and mightier than they. And then Moses intercedes. God changes his mind. He says, okay, I'm not going to re- destroy all those people, but he did, ju- he did bring serious consequences on the ten spies, and we're going to see that in verse 36 of chapter 14. And the men whom Moses sent to spy out the land, who returned and made all the congregation grumble against him by bringing up a bad report about the land, the men who brought up a bad report of the land died by plague. Tell me God doesn't sometimes bring judgment, even through a plague. I'm not going to make any references to COVID-19. I don't know if it's his judgment or not. But here he brought judgment on the ten bad spies through a plague. They died by plague before the Lord. And then verse 38, Of these men who went to spy out the land, only Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephunneh remained alive. And so God brought Joshua and Caleb into the land. The others died by the plague. And so I've got a little diagram for you today. Okay, you know I love props. All right, here's what fear looks like. The challenge, can you see this? The challenge, y'all know the greater and lesser signs. If uh, they still teach that in math today, I don't know what they teach in school anymore. But okay, so the challenge is greater than you, but it's also greater than your God. This is the picture of the spies. Their God was so small that He was not only greater than them, he, or, or less than, he, anyway, less than them, but less than the challenges. Here's what Joshua and Caleb believed, and what you and I need to believe. The challenge is greater than we are, but it's lesser than God. God's greater than the challenge, and God's greater than we are. And so when we're faced with something that causes us fear, or we're faced with a challenge, or a temptation, or maybe a past thing in your life that you feel terrible for, maybe you've blown it, maybe you've sinned, okay? God is greater. His forgiveness and grace is greater. For me personally, Probably one of the greatest challenges I faced was the decision to start Living Hope Church. Spent about a year just praying and asking God for confirmation. So in the name of faith, we don't do things that are foolish or flippant or, or presumptuous. We, we are careful. It says here, be careful to follow the Lord. And he says, if it's God's will that we go into the land, he's bigger. So I love that sense of first we need to make sure it's the will of the Lord. And I believe strongly that God wanted me to start Living Hope Church, even though it was a huge step of faith financially and in terms of the people who were with us at that time, a very few number. And uh, it was a huge challenge, but I felt God leading and He has provided over and over and over. And every challenge, every obstacle I see now is an opportunity for God to show up and show off His glory. And that's the way it's going to be in your life. And I challenge you today, what, what are you facing that maybe your view of God needs to increase? And you need to seek the Lord and you need to press through and exercise faith in a great God who can give you the ability to overcome that. And so here's some, here's some I have five things that I hope will help you live by faith and not by fear. Number one, learn the attributes of God. I'm going to do a study this week in the YouVersion Bible. It's a seven-day plan by Louis Giglio on the attributes of God. It's important to constantly study and be refreshed on who God is, knowing His character. And I've mentioned this before, but books like Knowing God by J.I. Packer, The God You Can Know by Dan DeHaan, the section in Systematic Theology by Wayne Grudem on the attributes of God. See, you're, uh, you're knowing God accurately will determine whether or not he's bigger than your challenge. And so there's a book called How Big Is Your God? And it gets at that whole thing of of how do you view God and, and do you understand that he's omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent, holy, faithful, just, merciful. That's who God is. Number two, worship him. That's how you bring his attributes to earth is through worship. And, and just exalting Him and praising Him in song and using the Psalms. And so worship is a great way to bring the attributes right into your heart. Number three, find promises that relate to your challenge. Let's say that your, your challenge is really getting freedom from guilt. 
you've sinned, you've blown it, you've rebelled, you've done things that you know grieve God, but you just seem plagued with guilt and condemnation. Well, you need to get promises in His Word that relate to forgiveness, the completeness of forgiveness, how God views you now. Go to Neil Anderson's Victory Over the Darkness and learn who you are in Christ and learn 1 John 1, 9, that He not only forgives, but He cleanses us of all unrighteousness. Others of you, your challenge might be a temptation, a, 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 a sin that so easily entangles you, something maybe you're addicted to. Well, you go to 1 Corinthians 10, 13, no temptation's overtaken us, but such as is common to man, and God is, will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation, provide a way of escape. So you go to 1 Corinthians 10, 13, and every time you're tempted, you claim that verse. You repeat something about God's greatness and the filling of the Spirit being what's necessary for you to overcome that. So whatever the, the challenge, find a promise that you can claim and hold on to that relates to that. Number four, be strong in the power of the Spirit. Now, I don't mean buck up, just be strong in your flesh. Be strong in the power of the Spirit. That's what God told Joshua four times in Joshua 1 when he took the helm of leadership from Moses. Be strong, be strong, be strong and courageous. Be very strong and courageous. I believe because Joshua was not naturally a strong and courageous person. And so I want to just say this, and I say this with all love and, and compassion. Buck up. Don't be a spiritual wimp. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. You can do this. If you tap into God's power, there's no obstacle, no sin, no challenge you face that you can't have the victory in Christ through the power of the Spirit. So I challenge you today not to be a spiritual wimp. Don't just sit there and hang your head low. I can't do this and oh, we're just defeated and uh, No, we serve a great God. And then finally, number five, put God next to the challenge and ask yourself the question, who's bigger? Very simply. Put God next to the challenge and literally say, okay, who's bigger and who am I going to trust? Hope this encourages you today. I want to encourage you to listen to a song. If you have a moment now, I'd play it, but don't have the technology right here. But Chris Tomlin, Our God is Greater, Our God is Bigger. Uh, that's a great worship song to remind us of who God is. And tomorrow at Living Hope Church, if you're not already tuned into another church, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, Facebook Live, it's on our YouTube channel as well, Living Hope Church Athens. I'm preaching one of the most challenging chapters in all the Bible, Romans 9, election, predestination. We'll answer all your questions, ha, ha, ha. No, you'll, you'll probably come out with more questions and answers. But hey, here's the bottom line. It's okay to not have all the answers because guess what? Our God is beyond our full comprehension, but He's revealed enough of Himself to where we can properly submit and have that peace and joy and love that He promises as a, as, a, as a fruit of the Holy Spirit. So I want you guys to have a great day. Remember this diagram? <clears throat> All right, are you going to be? Your challenge is bigger than you, but is it bigger than God? I hope not. I hope you live this. Your challenge is bigger than you, but it's lesser than God. God is greater than any challenge, sin, difficulty, spirit so you can live a day that honors and glorifies Him. Father, we thank and praise You that You're a great God. I get fired up just talking about this because You're awesome. You're an awesome God. And You're bigger. You're mightier. You're more forgiving than any sin. Where sin abounds, grace all the more. Mercy triumphs over judgment because of the cross of Jesus. We give You praise that You are so mighty and so loving and that at the cross of Jesus, all of Your attributes are perfectly seen your sovereignty, your holiness to judge sin, but your love to take that judgment for us, your faithfulness to fulfill your promises, your mercy, your compassion, your uh, omniscience and omnipotence and omnipresence, everything that we need to know about you, we can see in the greatest clarity at the cross of Jesus Christ and His resurrection. And we pray this in His name, Jesus the name above every name, that at that name every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Have a great day.